Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. It's the one and only Chelsea in the building. <laughs> and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the various payment options you're gonna have when trying to build or develop, say, a Google site. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right on into it. All right, so the first way to have a shopping cart or any sort of payment system is to utilize Google and Google Sheets and App Script. So I found on the internet, obviously, this script. Um, there's a YouTube video for it. I will leave a link or put a card somewhere in here uh, for this script. But basically, it was a contact form, and I'll show you what it looks like. This was the contact form. The only difference was it was like contact information for your uh, like a person like it had gender here instead of product and it had like date of birth instead of date of order so to change that I went in and I tweaked the code a little bit now there are other ways to change it to make it more robust because right now it's literally just hit submit you could put a tag in so that when you hit submit it redirects to a shopping cart um, it is something I'm working on as a side project, but I haven't gotten to that point yet. It just takes a lot of time <laughs> to be able to try all of these different processes out. Uh, but the script is pretty simple. It's literally in Google Sheets <laughs> and that's it. The next option is going to be to create a checkout process using Reflow. Reflow is created by Bootstrap Studio and it's their e-commerce sort of platform. Now what's great about it is you can actually embed it into your Google site. So obviously this on the side is an, is a Google site and I did embed the demo in here just to see what it would look like because there's no point in going through coding all of it for no reason. So once you have it in there, you'll be able to have like your shopping cart, a full checkout process, and I'll probably add a video on top. So you'll be able to see that maybe on this side right here, but right here, you'll want to check out the documentation. This requires, um, you need knowledge. <laughs> oh, you need some knowledge to be able to use this, to use the documentation, um, make it all, the, make all the changes. You can do that in visual studio, which is what I did. So. It works out, but once I get it to working the way that I want to, I'll probably do an update. I am testing many options to be able to provide the best, best solution <laughs> to anyone who is trying to create an e-commerce site using Google Sites. The third option is to create a checkout uh, link using Stripe. And just make sure you always test whenever you're using <laughs> or developing something so this is in the test mode on the side of what checking out would look like now if you're selling a digital product you would need to make it so that once the payment is successful it redirects to whatever your digital product is that's pretty easy to do it's literally in the stripe pages um that you'll be able to set this portion up now it won't go through with any failed payments so you're pretty pretty good with that but just also be cautious of where you're putting your links because it doesn't take a genius to go and press F freaking 12 <laughs> and find out where your stuff is redirecting to. So keep that in mind. Now the fourth option, which you obviously see on the side is to use PayPal smart buttons. The problem I found with using smart buttons is you are limited to one category of a product. Uh, so you would want to go into the developer mode option to set up a more robust checkout option. Um, so that would be done in here. But again, so I have the photographer Google site, the naturalist Google site. They're all websites. However, if I wanted to create a separate button and make one that was for, say, I don't know, Instagram uh, templates, then I would not be able to do that because I'm limited to the one button. Now the workaround that, the workaround to that is using option four, 
which will be to check out using the PayPal shopping cart option. The only thing is you're gonna have to create the actual cart. Like, so you can click add to cart and obviously now I have a bunch of stuff added to this uh, shopping cart that I created in my PayPal account. And then if I hit checkout, obviously it's gonna make me check out. But if I hit continue shopping, it'll take me, usually <laughs> when it's open, it'll actually take me back to the website to be able to check out. You could also view the cart, but you will have to add these individual buttons to every single item that you create. Now I'll see, now I have $700 worth of <laughs> four websites in here. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It can be, it's really quick to make. And then once you do have add to cart and checkout, uh, you will have to include a, man, I don't even know. <laughs> I'll let somebody else give, give that information. I'm not, but you could theoretically include all of your digital products that someone adds to a cart. And when they check out, it's, you just have to set up the page for after the checkout with these items in the cart, if that makes sense. I'm, I'll be honest, I don't really know it that well myself because I'm a designer, but I'm trying, I'm trying. All right, so the last option that I have, <laughs> and this is specific to digital products, actually any product, but I'm gonna just say digital products. Um, this one is, a little bit complicated it's easy because there's a script that already exists for it um, you do get a trial with that particular developer but anyways you can have a checkout using Google Sheets PayPal and their webhooks API you can set up additional processes after this takes place I definitely had to um, just because of the differences in how I process my information and the fact that I use categories and not and not necessarily I don't sell things by quantities or uh, how you say yeah I just don't sell things by quantity I sell them by literally their individual codes which when I'm selling it's um, when I sell a Google site template I generate a ID number for that particular site so yes I have a lot of duplicate sites it's like oh it sounds good but how does it work so here you go you'll do PayPal checkout I'm gonna see if I'm logged in to my sandbox account once you hit pay now on the page it says order completed you'll receive an email shortly I'm actually gonna change that so that it doesn't do this on the screen and instead in the separate window when it opens up thus resetting the form and the page now because that happened it's gonna send myself and the individual in email uh there's a f there's a process after this where instead of it sending you an email you work with google's app script and you make it so that after it generates a pdf and sends the document you then attach this invoice into your own Google Drive and you can put it in your folder. So Google already actually has that set up. Um, it is a script. If you go to, where is it? I'm getting notifications about it it's like this. And so I actually put in some, some of my own sample information, but while combining this script with the original developers script, it's made it so much easier for me to be able to uh, create a checkout process for digital products and so maybe I'll be like them and make my own code and start charging people but I just I don't know I feel bad about that all the time so maybe not just buy my damn website template okay just do that I, <laughs> I'll give you the code you can do whatever you want with it <laughs> so anywho that's pretty much what I've been working on is connecting the two so that yes you might send this person an invoice and I'm actually going to update it and show a full process on it in a later date um, but for now I just wanted to share those six six yeah six <laughs> checkout processes that you can actually have on your google site so anyways as always thanks so much for watching and if you have any questions always feel free to reach out laters